Hey guys, how's it going? This is your boy Coach E Kong, and this is my weekly vlog, New Vision for Your Nutrition, My Unfiltered Perspective, Tips and Advice on Health. Today's topic is Big Butts. Um, we're going to basically look at the correlation between working out in the gym and how it affects your gluteus maximus. Um, this is the last series part, this is part 10 of the fairy tale series so i hope that this is the best one all right so let's get into it so first and foremost um, cosmeticsurge.net on average a procedure is going to cost around eleven thousand dollars so i wanted to kind of look into a couple of examples and a couple of personal experiences myself when it comes to creating and growing your glutes without going under the knife um, so now we know that there's interest because clearly if you've been on instagram you understand that um creating maybe even more so than just a natural coke bottle figure but just creating the um the perception of a very slim waist and a big butt big chest is the the norm <clears throat> for most people and even if it's to to the point where people go um into very um life-threatening situations a lot of people are willing to willing to risk that to ensure that they actually mimic some of the bodies that they see so um what i wanted to help bring light to is how you can naturally bring about the same curvature depending on your genetics of course um, to accentuate the best parts of your body. <clears throat> the first thing I want to touch upon is perception. Working with clients, you understand one thing um, and one thing very well, and that is that sometimes the perception of what you see and what is actually reality are two different things. and they will look totally different. Because of the way their body is able to distribute the weight in their frame, the perception of them, one looks like she's very, probably more curvy uh, than the other one. The, the, the more bottom heavy one is probably gonna look a little bit more curvy than the top heavy one, only because right in that, that midpoint, that center of the body, a lot of things on the bottom half just seem to be more eye-catching, okay? So that brings about the point to say that you don't necessarily need to have the biggest butt if you can be perceived to have a smaller waist to, to hip ratio. What do I mean by that? Your your chest and your, your butt stay the same, but your waist is cinched or slim enough to where it almost creates that hourglass figure without without you even trying or, or doing anything different. How you get there though is very strategic, <clears throat> very strategic in how you train. For me, I found that the um, the stationary uh, squat machine. Um, And that particular squat machine for me was what um, isolated and really created what, again, I int unintentionally um, wanted, which was a which was a larger a larger backside. Now, the crazy thing about that is, I I clearly there's a difference in my butt from before and after. Uh, and I just wanted to touch on a, little, a couple of techniques. So on that particular machine, which I do recommend if you are someone who is looking to increase the size of your, your butt, on that particular machine, what I found was, was beneficial was number one, um, slowing down, okay? It wasn't rushed. You, you know, if you go on that squat machine and you're rushing it, a lot of times you're not gonna be able to get the most benefit. 
So number one is, is make sure you slow down. <clears throat> number two, I found that making sure you control the weight at the bottom and squeeze at the top, because what you have is you have that the glutes are under tension the whole time. And then at the minute you use them to, to elevate your body back up and you squeeze at the top, I mean, literally your, your butt has nowhere to, nothing to do except to tear down muscle fibers and, and regrow them. And so what I would normally do, because my big thing was I was trying to grow my legs and my hamstrings, you know, not necessarily my butt, but your, you know, your butt is, is part of the, you know, you know, part of that, you know, part of that posterior side. So you can't miss it. But what I did more than anything is I stayed in range, uh, you know, short range. I didn't lock out at the top, which means I didn't lock my knees, knees. Now, I didn't necessarily sit down, you know, parallel. I went past parallel. And then before actually going up all the way, I stopped about 95%. And then I did that again. And then lastly, for me, um, if you are someone who is looking to, you know, inject yourself, <clears throat> just make sure that you are looking to get as much information as possible about what it is that you know you're you're doing <clears throat> make sure that you have all your facts and, and that you you kind of speak and talk to people because i think the biggest thing about this blog today too is you know they're going to be people who feel like this is something that is valuable for them to do under the knife and i never want to be someone who says you know you can't do something with your body but Keep in mind, if you choose to do it, please look to try to get as much research and information on it as possible. And again, look to these other two points to try to avoid you having to go under the knife, if at all possible, um, just for your sa safety and your health. Um, um, but that's it, guys. Just a quick, um, you know, opinionated, but, you know, educated look at some options for and against um getting surgery or basically growing a bigger butt so again this is your boy coach econ follow me on all my social sites um at coach econ at the life changer um, but that's all i got guys thank you so much for tuning in hope this was educational or at least you got something from it uh, thank you so much i'm out